And so we're going to have to uh, keep Sign, it quiet. Signs up. Thank you. <laughs> All right, Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? <laughs> oh, they're on. We're going to use our outside voices tonight. It's on. Are they, oh, they're on. Okay, inside on voices. Okay, good. Then. Dr. Chase. Here. Ms. Decatur. Here. Ms. Egan. Here. Ms. Hazard. Here. Ms. Healy. Here. Mr. McCosker. Here. Ms. Young. Aki. Madam Chair, you have a quorum. Thank you. Would you please stand for the color guard presentation and the Pledge of Allegiance? to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We'd like to thank Stafford High School's Navy JROTC cadets Brandon Tremblay, William Korn, Corbin Reed, and Zachary Reed for being with us this evening. Do we have a motion for approval of the agenda? Madam Chair, motion to amend the agenda. Um, to remove item 11.03, the FAB committee would like the board to receive additional information before considering this item. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. That brings us to awards and recognitions. Mr. Nichols. Good evening, Madam Chair, school board members, and Dr. Kisner. This evening, I have the pleasure of recognizing one of our very own middle schools for a wonderful recognition. The Virginia Department of Education and the Virginia Council for Interstate Compact on the Educational Opportunities for Military Children recently recognized 59 Virginia schools as Purple Star Schools. The Purple Star designation is awarded to military-friendly schools that had designated their commitment to meeting the needs of military connected schools and families. To qualify for the Purple Star designation, schools must have a trained staff member assigned as a primary point of contact for military families and students. The point of contact also serves as a liaison between the school and the local military communities. Schools must demonstrate their commitment to meeting the needs of military students by providing resources, programming, and address issues such as transitions and also academic planning for our military students. At this time, I'd like to ask Stafford Middle School Principal Dr. Smith and also Stafford Middle School School Counselor Geraldine Carey to come forward. This is the first year that VDOE and the Virginia Council has designated Purple Star Schools. It is my honor to announce that the most recent Stafford County Public School to join this designation is Stafford Middle School. Please join me in congratulating.
Thank you, Mr. Nichols, and congratulations, Mr. Smith, and all you do for your, for your students and your schools, your, Ms. Carey as well. That brings us to 4.02, Proclamation for Music in Our Schools Month, Youth Art Month, and Theater in Our Schools Month. Ms. Hauser, would you read that proclamation for us, please? I would be happy to, as I said um, jokingly to my board, I will not be singing it or any other interpretive um, things because I am a much better um, observer of the arts than maybe a participant. So um, this is a proclamation to designate March 2019 as Music in Our Schools Month, Youth Art Month, and Theater in Our Schools Month. Whereas arts education, dance, music, theater, art and visual art enriches the lives of countless people through arts programs in our schools and acknowledge the arts as a powerful tool to unlock the potential of the whole child. And whereas arts education is a critical component of the learning process and develops student creativity, self-discipline, and critical thinking abilities, and whereas research indicates that students with more arts education have higher academic achievement across the curriculum. And whereas arts education is recognized as being necessary for the full development of all children. And whereas music in our schools month, youth art month, and theater in our schools month are special opportunities for the Stafford community to engage in the ongoing process of arts education and bring a heightened awareness of the importance of the arts in education. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that the Stafford County School Board hereby designates March 2019 as music in our schools month Youth Art Month and Theater in Our Schools Month. The school board urges all citizens to take an interest and give full support to the unique contribution that quality school arts education programs provide for our children. Thank you, Ms. Hazard. That brings us to staff reports, uh, FY19 second quarter financial review. I was going to pull it up on the screen, but screens are not turned on. So I will um, run through it. I don't, Missy, did you have a chance to add the? We're right. technologically challenged this evening. <laughs> Microphone's back, computer's up. Is it, is it showing up? Yeah, we okay. Have it on our personal screen. All right, great. Um, so this is just a quick recap of our first half of the year. Um, so a quarter review, this is typically just the operating fund. Um, I wanted to touch on the changes in the state revenues. Specifically, uh, you may have heard that when the General Assembly broke this past weekend, they were, had some revised templates out included in that showed a decline in our, per, um, our ADM which obviously uh, addressed our per pupil allocation. And I just want to clarify that they're basing their projection for the rest of 19 and for 20 on our September 30th numbers, which came in slightly below budget. But since September 30th, we've um, added several kids. And so if you look on the screen, so September 30th enrollment was 28,905. And by November 30th, we were at 29,011. And by January 31st, we were almost at 29,150. So they will ultimately revise those templates after the March 31st submission of enrollment. And I doubt we will be at 29,149, but we will be above the 934, which will kind of even out with that September 30 enrollment number. Um, so I don't expect to see a decrease in state revenue for FY19. Um, I just wanted to mention that on the other local revenue side, uh, we got noticed that it's not actually in this report because we got noticed in um, this month actually that we'll get the payment next month is we get in the prior years we have it about two hundred sixty thousand dollars in our p card rebate so as we use our purchase cards jp jp morgan gives us a reimbursement back directly to us each year and because of our ex we've you know looked at ways within our department and our ap department of uh, trying to put more on the cards as they come in. Uh, let's say if they receive something that's going to be paid by check and we realize, hey, this vendor will take the P card, we go ahead and put it on the P card at that time. We pay the P card off each month. We don't pay interest like a typical credit card. Actually, we pay it off weekly, I should say. So um, 
not a whole lot of money, but they did inform us that our PCARD is going to be up over 320000 the rebate this year. So um, just by pushing more and more stuff onto that, onto that rebate. So those are some additional funds. And I had already um, in the 2020 operating budget increased that PCARD rebate to help us pay for um, some of the items on the purchasing side, that, um, the additional staffing there. Um, so on, our, on the expenditure side, uh, just want to let you guys know we're monitoring the salaries and benefits monthly. Uh, we get much clearer projections as we get to the end of the third quarter. So when I come back to you in a couple months, uh, we'll have a lot better um, uh, outlook on where we stand on um, savings. If, if they're already on the salary and benefit sides, we are projecting at this point that we are going to have savings. It's just hard to say. Um, there's a lot that fluctuates between now and the end of the year. Um, the health insurance expenditures are, and this is the true expenditures, are tracking slightly higher um, than they were in the past year, nothing to be alarmed about. We've had some really good low years, and we're still kind of in that category, but um, a few thousand dollars higher than, than, than the prior year. And, and as always, just pointing out that you will see budget transfers on the quarterly report for contracted services. So uh, from the budget salary lines into our contracted services lines, and, and that's not new to you guys. Um, as far as the other expenditures, uh, most are tracking within an accepted variance. I wanted to point out some of the, the plus sides of legal fees. And the prior year, I came to you and said, we're blowing our legal fee budget out of the water, and we were having to use some of our contingency money to help cover that. So I just want to point out that year to date through uh, on this quarterly report, we've only spent approximately $60,000, which at this point last year, I think we were over 200000 And our you know, fuel is something we always watch and prices have, uh, have been very competitive this year, so we're, we're fine on fuel and, and utilities. And just pointing out that once Missy gets it attached, she's probably already got it, because I know Missy's good. Um, uh, you will have um, the, the actual quarterly report, uh, which will break it down by functional category and shows our revenues. And, and as always, I will point out that we do accrue a large chunk of our salaries for July, August, and September get accrued back to June. So it won't look like we're actually halfway through the year or most of our compensation lines um, until we get closer to the end. And I've attached the quarterly report that the Board of Supervisors received from their staff. Any questions right. for Mr. Fulmer? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fulmer. All right. That brings us to citizen comments. Dr. Chase. Yep. So uh, individuals wishing to comment at this time may do so by responding to the general invitation of the chairwoman. Speakers shall identify themselves by name, address, and organizational affiliation if the spokesperson represents an organization. Speakers shall also announce the purpose or topic of their comments. Uh, three minutes shall be allotted to speakers. The chairwoman reserves the right to restrict the total citizen comment received at any particular meeting to a predetermined maximum number of minutes with the approval of the board. Citizen comment which is profane, abusive, or which threatens eminent physical harm shall be ruled out of order by the chairwoman. Although the board provides the opportunity for citizen comment, individuals desiring to register complaints against division employees or division programs, services, or activities may also utilize the procedures outlined in Stafford County Public School Policy 1113 Public Complaints. We have 17 <coughs> speakers who've signed up. Uh, once we get through those 17, if anyone else would like to address the board, you're welcome to do so. I'm going to call them um, four at a time so you can be ready to, to line up and, and come down. Um, the first speaker is Angela Hensley. The second is Adam Holmes. The third is Christian Peabody. And the fourth is Kara Burford. Uh, Angela Hensley, 111 Channel Cove, um, Quai Harbor resident, uh, former monk, your parent. Hello, my name is Angela Hensley. I'm a 20-year resident of Aquia Harbor. Both my sons went to Moncure, and their brother, who is not my son, is currently a kindergartner at Moncure. I've been actively attending town halls and meetings throughout this redistricting process, as I have in previous redistricts and plans to close Moncure. This is not a new problem in Stafford, and given the planning in this county, is not a problem that is going away anytime soon. I'd like to focus my talk tonight on the importance of community schools. One of the most troubling aspects of this entire process is the talk of data, flawed data, APUs, and projections. 
It seems that in this process, many, but not all, of those tasked with making these decisions are ignoring the fact that those affected by this redistricting are not data or pretty maps, but are children, families, and communities. Children's families and communities who are devoted to these schools with a bond that transcends many generations and well beyond the time our children attend the schools. These are our community schools. I will use my own family, who is not unique, as an example. My parents moved to Aquia Harbor about five years after I did. Before they even had grandchildren at Moncure, they were attending school community events there and joined the latest program or event that the neighborhood children were in. I no longer have children at Moncure, but yet I still volunteer there. It is still my community school and therefore I and others like me still support it. <coughs> Volunteerism and community support of Moncure from Aquia Harbor does not wane once our children move on. It's not just Aquia Harbor families who support Moncure, but organizations too. For just one example, the Cub Scout PAC that is chartered by the Aquia Harbor Property Owners Association does its service to Moncure. It is their community school. If I had time, I could go on and on with persisting long-term examples of both volunteer and financial support from Aquia Harbor residents and organizations to Moncure. Based on what I have read and heard from other communities, I know that other neighborhoods feel strongly about their current community schools too. I grew up and then spent my teaching career in Fairfax County, one of the largest school systems in the country. At my 25-year high school reunion, we decided, excuse me, we decided to date group photos. Do you know what groups we decided on? Our elementary schools. That's right, a bunch of old people at a high school reunion didn't take photos with their state champion basketball team, which we were, other sports teams, band, cheer, debate, National Honor Society, or anything else. From tenured Ivy League professors and doctors to blue collar workers, the group people most identified with was their community elementary school. In a county with over one million residents, people still felt a kinship and a sense of belonging with their local community elementary school. These bonds that stick and they stay for a lifetime. These community bonds are important now and in the future. Please understand these strong bonds and think about the children and families rather than flawed you, data Ms. and pretty Hensley. maps. Ms. Hensley, I'm sorry, but with all these speakers, we're gonna have to keep it to three minutes, but we do have your statement for the record. Okay, I have a couple more sentences that are very important. Thank you. Hi, good evening. Uh, I, I was very uh, thrilled to hear about the uh, proclamation. I'm glad I'm here on that night in particular because my name is Adam Holmes. I'm from the Garrisonville District and I'm very proud to be the chairman of the Fine and Performing Arts Advisory Committee. Uh, for those in attendance, our committee's purpose is to advise the school board of the arts education needs of all students throughout the school division. Uh, first, on behalf of the committee, <clears throat> I thank the board for their support in ensuring high quality, equitable, and consistent art education programs uh, that they're provided and maintained for the students of Stafford County. In particular, though, we would like to thank the board for their efforts last year in uh, addressing our arts program staffing needs as well as implementing co-curricular stipends for middle school, or middle school orchestra and theater arts teachers. Uh, these stipends demonstrate a commitment to fairness and appreciation for our arts te teachers' labor and a recognition of the value their labor brings to our children and our community. Uh, we look forward to continuing a productive relationship with the board this year as we identify and address areas of improvement. Uh, you know, whether our students audition for and earn places in district, regional, and uh, state ensembles like hundreds of Stafford County students each year, or they're invited to perform at the White House like the Mountain View High School Chorus, um, Stafford County students enjoy wide recognition for their talents in the arts. Uh, while we can think of many ways to foster these talents, the committee is discussing a few courses of action in particular. First, we recognize the importance of arts programming that is both innovative and accessible. Um, that is why our budget recommendations include funding for pilot programs designed to bring innovative arts programming to our students. Second, we want to provide full funding for student fees for district, regional, and state events. Um, our art students are, are very passionate, they work hard, and we believe their recognition and success should not be predetermined by their wallet. Uh, we want all of our students to know that if they do the work to earn a spot to represent their community, that we proudly have their backs. Uh, the committee 
uh, continues to draft education specifications for high school six. Uh, we are incorporating the lessons we have learned from schools within the district and across Virginia, uh, what works well, what challenges exist, and where resources could be distributed more effectively. Um, these lessons also help inform our last area of focus, and that uh, is uh, an ongoing appraisal of where our current high schools stand. Uh, we continue to examine and will recommend ways in which we can bring a greater degree of parity to our school's arts programs and facilities so no Stafford County student is shortchanged in their arts education simply because of their street address. Um, lastly, we provided invitations to the school board to uh, the Brook Point Annual Arts Festival. I would like to extend that invitation to everyone here in attendance. That'll be at the end of March. In fact, a, a full calendar of our events is available on the website. Thank you, Mr. Holmes. Mm -hmm. Mr. Peabody. All right. Good evening, everybody. Good morning. Uh, good evening, Missy, members of the board, Dr. Kisner, and the educators in attendance tonight. My name is Christian Peabody. I'm the music teacher at Falmouth Elementary and the president of the Stafford Education Association. I really don't have a, <coughs> excuse me, a statement prepared. I mean, that's all we need right there. And look at yourselves as well. <clears throat> this is incredibly exciting. Um, I could talk about the past, about how many years it's been since the educators in this division and this board and the superintendent have been prepared to support a budget that meets their students' needs as aggressively as it does and take that across the street. But let's focus on tonight as well and the future that we're about to enact for everyone in Stafford County. This is incredible. This is only a stepping stone as well, but it's very, very, very um, uplifting and empowering that we get to present a budget together to the Board of Supervisors and the community to maximize the funding to deliver the needs that our school system desperately needs, but also to enact a vision that Dr. Kisner has to re return us to a national level of excellence that we've always known we've had. So thank you for all your hard work. Thank you for your engagement with us at the Stafford Education Association and for your patience as well. If there's anything we can do to help you do your jobs as well, just hit us up. Thank you. After Ms. Uh, Burford, uh, Matt Lenz, Alan Watkins, Tina Bryan, and Tori Plita. Good evening, school board members and the superintendent. Uh, my name is Kara Burford. I am an educator at Falmouth Elementary and I'm the SCA vice president. Um, I'm gonna keep it real short and sweet. I could speak to you about how the 5% raise could pos pos uh, positively impact my financial situations, but you all know that. I could explain to you how it has helped entice educators to come to our district, but you already know that it would. I could give you the spiel of how it could help retain our teachers, but once again, you already know all this. What I will say is I'm actually currently debating on having my daughter attend schools in Stafford next year. This frightens me, not because of the decisions and not because of the educators here but because of your decisions of how it could impact the level of education she could receive. Eventually, like many of our children in Stafford, she might be crammed into an oversized classroom. Or she might be taught by various long-term subs within a school year who struggle with knowing just the basic content. However, this debate also saddens me because I've worked in many districts, and this is truly one of the only districts I have fought to come back to, because I enjoy Stafford and the school I work at. And I know how much the educators care about students here. This is not the same across other districts in our state. So I'm stuck. If I have her attend schools here, cross my fingers, Hope she gets a chance to experience a wonderful, caring education that Stafford provides. But that is only if the school board takes the time and ensures they go across the street 
and fights to put the education of our children first. Or the other option is, you know what could happen. Thank you. Yes. Good evening, members of the school board and Superintendent Kisner and Melissa. My name is Matthew Lentz. I'm at 14 Marshall Place in Ferry Farm, 22405 George Washington District. Tonight I'm reaching out to you about retention. One of the main points of our Red for Ed movement. It's no secret that educators have left our county over the past few years. Some have even left the profession entirely due to the increasingly overwhelming responsibility that we have to burden as educators. We see this budget as an excellent first step to retain our precious educators and I would like to thank you for your support for our movement. We, like you, want only what is best for our kids. In our opinion, what is best for our children, our future, is consistency. Children need consistency. I already have students asking me if I will be at Colonial Forge next year. This makes me sad because it reveals how the past 10 years of public education have resulted in this insecurity in our students where they don't have the consistency that they need which can lead to so many other problems as well. Students love being able to see familiar faces year after year. Students perform best when they have a positive and safe environment that is conducive to learning. We with you work together to offer our students the best public education we can offer, but we can't offer this without our educators. We can't offer this if people are miserable in their positions as a result of being overwhelmed and underpaid. Yes, we love what we do, but we also can't keep going on without some positive change. 5% may not be enough to retain some staff, but it is a very good start. And again, I thank you from the bottom of my heart for embracing this positive movement we call Red for Ed. And in closing, I'd like to say that this is what democracy looks like. As a token of our appreciation, for your support, I wish to present all of you with t-shirts that we made for our group. Thank you. No, that's perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> we'll grow into them. And I'm going to give you <laughs> we can never do anything without our secretaries. Thank you. Yes. Doc, Dr. Chase and I have a uh, chair, vice chair meeting with the Board of Supervisors tomorrow, and we may wear it. Good evening, members of the school board, Dr. Kisner, and all my red-shirted friends out there. I'm Al Watkins, a choir resident, Kelowna Forge teacher, and that SEA guy that brings lots of charts and uh, data tables to you. And even though I have many of them with me right now, I'm not going to give a single one of them or send them to you. <laughs> Tonight is not the beginning of the end. It's not the end of the beginning. It's kind of the middle of the middle. A lot of work went into tonight's budget that you have prepared, and there'll be a lot more that is still to do. I started getting more involved in this whole entire process because of seeing so many quality teachers and friends leave Stafford. It made things so much harder for everyone involved. At tonight's work session that I was fortunate enough to attend, I saw Stafford differentiate itself from other counties, not just 5% for all, which I saw you approve, but an additional 1% for any teacher with 13 years or more experience. <laughs> Thank you so very much for all your work, and together with the support from our staff and our community, it is deeply appreciated. But do not lose sight 
that added compensation must continue year after year to make Stafford more competitive in the hope that I will not lose more friends that I have here working alongside me to better all of our students. Thank you very much. Hello, my name is Tina Bryan. I live at 39 Poplar View. My purpose for being here is about the redistricting uh, consideration. We moved here in December and my children started school in January. I've been in education for 25 years. So when I heard about the redistricting, I did some research. And I found that there are best practices for redistricting. Um, and I'll quote this, to do school reassignment, um, the processes should be feasible, transparent, efficient, and equitable. And none of these plans are any of those. They are not equitable for our children. It, off of Brook Road, you're asking our children to drive to a new city, okay, far, far away, down past two VRE stations, and a road that is broken. By the way, past a prison is the way the bus will go off of Eskimo Road, it's like right there. Our children will be traversing through all of that to get to a school that they'll pass Conway to get to. At a school that isn't rated the same as Stafford Elementary. Stafford Elementary consistently gets an A rating. It's an awesome school. Grafton, B-ish, A minus, depending on what you're looking at. It's not equitable. The whole purpose of this, according to the Stafford County website, is so that schools will have a reduced free and free uh, lunch situation. Right now, the highest is 53.58%. This is your website, by the way. Um, this is unconstitutional. You cannot move students based on minority distribution of neighborhoods. It is not right. Brown versus Board of Education and Plessy versus Ferguson ensure that. I don't understand this redistricting idea. Um, there's certainly more things to do with the money in the county than redistrict. Think of the green. Think of putting another bus route out there. Think of putting these kids in an area where it's just simply not safe. Have you driven down Brook Road? Right now it is broken. It is not finished. There's a huge stretch that has to be readdressed. And that's not fixed. It was supposed to be done, by the way, in December. Now they're saying July, but if you've driven there, it's not a possibility. Research shows that students perform better in their community schools. And if you want parental engagement and involvement like we have at Stafford Elementary, it is amazing. In my 25 years in education, I've never seen anything like that. I've taught around the world. It is unbelievable. Parents are involved. They support the school. Asking us to drive that far, none of you would do it. None of you would get in your car and drive an extra 40 minutes to take your kids to a school. By the way, the SAC program is full there. Thank it's you, not Brown. an option. Thank you. All right, after Ms. Plita, Terry Wellborn, Ruth Mayo, Sherry Pierce, and Diane Clavino. Good evening, my name is Tori Plata, and I am speaking to you as a um, Stafford Elementary School mother and Brook Road resident. Um, I've put together some slides for you because that's what I do, um, but I'm gonna concentrate on um, two very important points. The, one, the first one is that Stafford Elementary School is not over capacity. So to take our students and move them out of Stafford Elementary just doesn't make any common sense to those of us as parents. The second main issue is that you haven't looked at the feeder schools. You're going to take these students that I've circled in black here and move them. Every single plan moves some portion of those students. 
and they're the only ones. So if you look on, you can see in this sea of students, uh, that is at Stafford Middle School, with Plan A in the first year, only 24 of those rising fifth graders coming in as sixth graders, 24 out of 780 students, they won't know anyone. All of their friends from Grafton Village that they will have made the previous year are going to move on to a different school. And you're going to isolate our children. Not to mention the logistical nightmare as a parent having children at Stafford Middle School and Grafton Village Elementary School. And many of us have even younger children who are in daycares that are centered around Stafford Elementary School because that's where our community is. We're going to have to move them. And where to? Because there are no daycare centers on the way to Grafton Village from Brook Road. You are isolating us. I'm not saying not to split the bus route. I followed that bus route this morning an hour and a half until I got to the intersection of Andrew Chapel and Brook Road. And then I turned left and went down to Grafton Village. And I'll admit, it only added an extra eight minutes. It was only an extra eight minutes. But it was already an hour and a half. Why does the first kid get on at 7.30? I agree, you guys need to do something with our bus route. But sending them down to Grafton Village is not the answer. And especially when you get into these plans like plan B, when you have five students going to Stafford Middle School, five students, who are they going to be bonding with? Research shows that these kids need to keep their relationships. I don't think ignoring feeder, feeder patterns is the right way to go here. And I think you really need to look at Brook Road and Marlboro Point as its own area. It is a unique area with one way in and one way out. And to, I think the, con Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Terry Wellborn, and I'm the SCA Transportation ESP Caucus Chairperson, i.e., your bus drivers and monitors. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I mean school board, or maybe I should say jury, because you hold the fate of Stafford County Public Schools in your hands. Will you stand with your employees and pay a living wage, or will we see a mass exodus at the end of this school year, school year as in the past few years? We cannot continue to operate below staffing levels. If Stafford does not commit to paying bus drivers and monitors a living wage, we will continue to lose employees to Spotsylvania and Prince William counties. A good start to that is a 5% increase across the board for all employees. The past few years with using the median market pay scale has not worked. While it raised the starting pay, veteran drivers and monitors received very little pay increases. This inequity in pay increases has been detrimental to the morale of our department. The only fair solution is to give a 5% pay increase across the board. This includes bus drivers, monitors, teachers, all employees, including administrators. Stafford County Public Schools cannot operate properly without all of the departments being fully staffed and properly compensated for the work they do. Bus drivers and monitors increasingly have to deal with medical issues or behavior issues that we are being constantly trained for. The next school year will start on August 12th with 100 degree temps for days on end. Many of our employees cannot afford to live in Stafford. Did you know that the average starting pay for a bus driver with a Class B CDL is only $17,854? Stafford County is one of the wealthiest counties in the U.S. Its employees should be able to afford to live here. A 5% increase will help bring the school division closer to a living wage for our bus drivers and monitors. So what will the fate of Stafford schools be? Will you stand with your employees and give a 5% increase, no ifs, ands, or buts, or will you continue to make excuses and say, we value you and we would like to give you pay increases, but thank you. Hi, 
Uh, my name is Ruth Mayo. I live at 7 Halcom Lane in Stafford, Virginia, in Apple Grove in the Rock Hill District. I'm also a member of the SEA. I am here tonight as a citizen of Stafford, a mom to a daughter at A.G. Wright and a daughter at Mountain View High School, um, and a special education teacher for 19 years in Stafford County at Hampton Oaks Elementary School. My husband and I moved to Stafford in 2002 to give my daughters a home with grass around it and excellent schools. My daughters had excellent teachers at Hampton Oaks Elementary School. I did move them to A.G. Wright because that was supposed to be their middle school and Mountain View for their base schools for our middle school and high school. Now the schools are so crowded and the teachers have a lot of students to teach. They're still getting an excellent education and I've been really impressed with how they've been trying to move people, kids that have core courses that are really important. They've been moving them into teacher, extra teachers so that they're not having a long-term sub, but um, their classes are still really crowded and I can't imagine the caseloads that those teachers are having to teach. Um, but their teachers need a pay raise. I need a pay raise actually also too, but um, all staff, <laughs> including my paraprofessional, um, needs a pay raise at 5%. She's been working for over five years now and has not gotten a pay raise. And she's an excellent paraprofessional. And so I, I just thank all of the bus drivers, the teachers, the principals, everyone needs one. And we appreciate all your support that you can give us. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Diane Cleveno, and I live at 40 Walnut Farms Parkway in um, Stafford. I am here as a teacher, a parent of, of Stafford County. I work at North Stafford. I work with amazing people. They're caring. They're dedicated. We work hard. And I know there's a teacher shortage here in Virginia. And the reason I'm here is because I'm also a mother. And I know that Stafford County is now getting the reputation of not being a top place for students in college to come look. We are lucky. We are still getting amazing, wonderful people to work with us. But as the shortage continues, there are a lot of applicants who are not looking at Stafford County. We never see them because they don't apply. My daughter is one of them. She graduated from Stafford High School, did not come back to Stafford County. I wanted to talk to, I talked to her. She did not come back. Her reason was, Mom, I'm going to get to 70 before you get to 50. And I had nothing to say to that. So thank you for fighting for us. After Ms. Uh, Clavino, Amber Slayton, Sharon Foley, Brooke Daniels, and Jenny Fling. Thank you. Well, I'm not Ms. Clavino, but I am huh? Sherry Pierce. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, go ahead. And I, I was, I read them one ahead. So. Okay. I'm Sherry Clavino Pierce, 12 Averill Court, Hartwood District. I am here to share my story because a lot of my coworkers, and by the way, this SEA is awesome. I've never been here to help and fight. I've always been a member, but they're awesome. Um, they have asked me to share my story about the three young men that Stafford County Public Schools and my husband and I raised, okay? And their story is, you had Paul Pierce apply, put in 120 hours last year to apply for scholarships. He got $15,000 in scholarships, 120 hours. We giggled. That's a third of a starting teacher's salary. That is sad. You've got two of the other triplets who, because of their advanced diploma and their CTE education at Brook Point High School, were one of the first of the two to be accepted at a 5% rate at the apprentice school in Newport News. I am proud to tell you that in 10 months, 
they will be making more than a third year teacher here at 19 years old. That is sad. The reason they get paid for overtime. None of my fellow teachers do. We put in at least 60 hours a week. You may not see that other 20 hours in the school building because they're up late at night with their children doing their work at home. I need people to understand in real terms, and I thought that putting that into a real term or reality would, would make sense, okay? A third of a first-year teacher, and he did it in 120 hours. 19-year-old kids that we prepared here in Stafford County Public Schools making more than a third-year teacher in 10 months. Thank you. Is uh, Diane Clavino here? Oh, she did. Oh, all right. Amber Slayton. Hello, uh, my name is Amber Slayton and um, I'm, my residence right now is actually in transition. Uh, we are closing on our home on Brook Road in about a week, so that's why I'm here. Um, I heard about the redistricting and I heard that there was a three minute session and I just wanted to come and share my opinion. Um, I lived in Stafford for about five years. Uh, we were in the harbor. Um, the concern I have, I guess, for the redistricting is that when we consider schools, my daughter, who's with me, has a medical condition and goes to school with a nurse. Um, sometimes we have issues in the morning, and uh, the nurse, you know, will have to run home in order to get Aubrey, that's my daughter, um, you know, extra supplies or things like that. She has several things going on. It could be anything. It could be spare clothes. It could, we sometimes run out of clothes, that's kind of what happens. Uh, supplies, we run out of supplies. And um, I guess my concern is that if they redistrict, it puts kids like Aubrey in a situation where they're not close enough to school to get home in order to do those things. And then what is she left to do if she's at a school where she has no clothes and she has to go through somebody else's clothes or she doesn't have medical supplies and how are we supposed to handle that for a, for a child like her. Um, sometimes we run late and the nurse, you know, has to drive her to school. And the school is nearby right now, but if they redistrict, it won't necessarily be nearby, um, close enough, to, you know, to be able to do something like that by then, by the time you get back to school, I mean, what's the point? Um, so I just wanted to come and, and speak on behalf of the parents that have children that may be in our situation where we have emergencies that arise and and we don't know how our day is going to go and if we're going to need to go home for extra clothes or supplies or, or if we're going to be late for the bus. Right now, you know, she can run out the door and, and get to the bus on time. But if they redistrict, you're talking about waking a five, five and a half year old child up, you know, much earlier to get to a bus. Um, so we just wanted to sit, say that for other parents that may be in our position and just let it be known that it's a little bit of a concern um, being in the situation that we're in because that's something that we looked at when choosing a new home was where the schools are located and if it would be possible to get to and from the school in a timely fashion if an emergency arose. So I just was hoping to say that and to have our opinion matter a little bit and just be considered. You want to say hi? Hi. <laughs> Thank you. Good evening, Madam Chairwoman, School Board Representative Dr. Kisner. My name is Sharon Foley. I live at 49 Fountain Drive in the Aquia District. I haven't been here in a while. Have you missed me? <laughs> um, I'm here for saying I've been here for a long time coming, but is to say that I support the across the board 5% increase for all of our staff in our schools. For 20 years, I've been putting children on a bus every morning to go to a school. And I've been, from the bus driver who greets my child when they get on the bus, to the teachers, to the staff, I have received incredible nurturing, um, education, support, mentoring from 
all of the staff for those 20 years, and I have three more years to go, um, and I want that to continue to happen. Um, I trust that they're going to take care of my children, and they deserve to have a wage and to earn a living that reflects the importance they are in my life, in my children's lives, and in the life of this community. I follow the news and I'm aware that our surrounding communities are talking about increasing salaries again. I believe one of the local counties talked about a 7% increase. We're already behind the curve. How can we possibly keep up even if we only do 5%? This is an emergency. This is a real emergency. We need to get on board. We need to bring up these salaries so we don't lose any more staff from the bus drivers to the Paris to the educators who are teaching in the classroom. And I'm going to go across the street and let the Board of Supervisors know that I am willing to pay higher taxes, as I bet a lot of people in this room are. Because we can afford to, and we can't afford not to. Thank you. Brooke Daniels. Uh, the next two who've signed up are Jenny Flynn and Darren Flynn. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Brooke Daniels, and we live in Brooks Mill Estates. We have a son at Stafford Middle and a daughter who's a rising fourth grader at Stafford Elementary. The most recent three plans that have been submitted have every development along the northwest side of Brook Road from the Fork at Andrew Chapel up to Marlboro Point, all staying at Stafford Elementary, except for our neighborhood, Brooks Mill Estates, and the two equally small developments just past ours, Windermere and Poplar Hills. Brook Road is and has always been used as a natural delineation for zoning purposes. Every home on the northwest side of Brook Road on bus route 42, closest to SES, should remain at the school. Why has this small island been created, which logistically and geographically makes absolutely no sense, to send our very small group of children all the way down to Fredericksburg to Grafton Elementary? Our development, consisting of only 38 homes, currently has just seven elementary students enrolled at SES. Our bus driver, Mrs. Morris, makes just five stops along her route on our two-street development to transport our children to and from school. According to the new plans, next year, our daughter would be the only one in her grade going to Grafton. Then two years later, she would return to Stafford Middle after being removed from her group of friends who she's been with since kindergarten. Has any study been done by the consultant company to show the negative impact this would have on this small group of children socially, emotionally, mentally, and academically? Middle school is the most difficult chapter in a children's social development, and this drastic move could be detrimental to their academic success, mental health, and well-being. They would be thrown to the wolves as they start middle school, not being included in a group of friends since they were removed, displaced, and not able to continue growing those relationships. They would start off the most difficult year of school feeling like a complete outsider. This would be especially hard for children like ours who have a medical 504 or IEP where having a consistent continuity of care is imperative for their ability to thrive and succeed. Currently, our children in our neighborhood are one of the last stops to be picked up in the morning and one of the first stops dropped off in the afternoon due to our close proximity to SES. This is one of the main reasons we purchased a home in our specific neighborhood. At the school board meeting on January 17th, we were told with certainty that none of the new plans would increase any of the children's bus ride times. According to the new plans, this is not true <clears throat> for children living in these three developments. If these new plans are passed, next year the same children will be the very first stop picked up in the morning and the last stop dropped off in the late afternoon due to being the furthest away from Grafton. The bus driver would literally pass right by our house every day, transporting all of their peers off of Brook Road to SES. Our children would be forced to enjoy the, possibly the longest bus route to exceed maybe an hour and a half one way along a 9.7 mile route on a long windy two-lane rural road that's currently closed for construction and is often closed due to high water creating an even longer detour route. Therefore, most parents would have to drive their children to and from school every day for safety and schedule purposes. What about families like ours that have older siblings at Stafford Middle or Brook Point? Thank you, Ms. Daniel. Thank you. Can I give this to you? You're welcome to give it to the clerk. Thank you. Thank you.
Good evening. My name is Jenny Flynn and I live on Century Court. We are highly concerned about any redistricting plan that would move Brook Road children from Stafford Elementary to Grafton Village in Fredericksburg. The most recent Freelance Star article stated that the school board's criteria for plan revisions included ensuring no bus rides are longer than they are now. And Ms. Mather of Arkbridge is quoted as saying, quote, kids should go to the closest school they possibly can go to. If anyone on Brook Road is moved from SES to Grafton, both of these criteria would not be honored. If you move Brook Road children from SES to Grafton, you are hitting us with a double whammy. Feeder patterns, which impose logistical impossibilities for parents and peer separation issues for children, as well as excessively long bus rides for students and longer drive times for parents. Feeder patterns result in a logistical nightmare for Brook Road families as our children are slated to go to Stafford Middle and Brook Point High School on Courthouse Road. Both of these are within a mile and a half from Stafford Elementary, but are a whopping eight and a half miles from Grafton. They are on north to south opposite sides of the map. Our daughter is currently enrolled in Stafford Elementary in second grade. This fall, our younger daughter will begin kindergarten. So having multiple children in different schools affects us beginning in 2022. That's not that far off. A round trip from home twice a day will already mean an hour of driving. But if we were moved to Grafton, a round trip twice a day would double to two hours. Yet you have not incorporated feeder patterns into your criteria. This baffles me. Brook Road students attending Grafton would be the only ones from Grafton who would feed back into Stafford Middle and then Brook Point High School. This small group of students would essentially be the victims of two redistrictings in that they'd be taken away from their school, teachers, and friends now with the initial move and then again at the very beginning of middle school. This is a huge concern. Bus rides. Remember, the revisions aim to ensure that, quote, no bus rides are longer than they are now. Our daughter does not even take the bus because it is an hour and 20 minutes each way. When we are only a 12 to 15 minute drive from SES, we cannot justify her spending nearly three hours a day on a bus. And Grafton is farther away than SES. The only thing that makes sense is for all Brook Road students to be kept at SES and not ostracized to the opposite side of the map, only to be relocated once again to Stafford for middle and high school. We are hopeful that you will make the right decision and forego forcing families living off Brook Road to relocate their children for reasons that have nothing to do with their educational well-being. What's next? When are the town meetings? They are even more needed at this point with the numerous plans in play. Is the public supposed to print out and digest the numerous plans on their own and then present their arguments for and against these plans at the public hearing? Parents deserve to have the information presented to them in person in order to fully understand the ramifications of any plan that you intend to vote on. We hope you will truly hear us and the voices of all of your constituents. Thank you for the opportunity to be heard. Good night. Good evening, my name is Darren Flynn, uh, husband of Jenny Flynn who just spoke with you today. I'd like to echo some of my wife's comments and expound a little bit on some concerns that I have also, um, aside from the specific examples that she presented regarding our family. Uh, I would also say that there are issues that, it, that affect the entire district that aren't being addressed by this redistricting plan. Uh, for one thing, I've yet to hear a valid reason why this redistricting is being proposed in the way that it is and that the damage is being spread to the entire, uh, the entire district as a whole. Uh, to me, it smacks of collectivism, and I don't think that's the image that we want to teach our children at this, at this uh, age. Um, by your own numbers, there's a couple of schools in this district that are actually overcrowded. And I see no reason, and I've been given no explanation as to why those schools couldn't be managed to, to, uh, to fix them directly rather than spreading the pain over the entire county. So that's one question that I still have and has yet to be answered. Um, we also haven't been told, you know, there's, uh, there's obviously a lot of growth in Stafford County. Uh, there will be need for new schools at some point, and I'm sure you're more aware of than I am. Uh, but all that does for me is create more concern, as my wife echoed previously, that this will become an ongoing problem, that every few years we're going to shake the uh, Yahtzee Cup again and see where our students are going to land because we didn't plan, we didn't look ahead. And I understand that the school board is not a, responsible for uh, urban growth and zoning and approving building permits and things like that. However, you're our voice with the Board of Supervisors. That is your responsibility. And I understand that decisions were made in the past that you weren't necessarily a part of. 
but you ask for this responsibility now, and we ask that you take that responsibility seriously and, and look forward instead of looking back. It's easy to look back and blame poor planning in the past and shake our, shake our heads and wring our hands and say there's nothing we can do about it, but that's unacceptable to me as a parent and as a taxpayer. Um, I'd just like to close by saying sacrificing children as a result of poor planning that's been done in the past is the worst solution to a problem. Um, it's your responsibility to address this in a way that negatively impacts the least number of people rather than trying to justify it by spreading the pain amongst all of us. Thank you for your time. All right, that's all the speakers who signed up. If there is anyone else who would like to address the board, uh, please come forward. And when you finish speaking, uh, please sign the, uh, the sheet on the, uh, the ledge there. If, if you could give us your name and address, please. Hello, good evening, school board and Dr. Kisner. Um, I hadn't planned on talking tonight until I listened to everybody else talk. And there is a resounding theme with everybody's conversation, whether ta they're talking about teachers' pay raises or they're talking about redistricting. And that is the word home. Stafford County is home to our children. Stafford County schools are home to our children. And our teachers in Stafford County schools are home to our children. We spend seven and a half hours and longer with these children every day for five days a week. Some of us stay longer, some of us spend longer time with them, some of us tutor them on the weekends, but we are dedicated teachers. And to be standing here in some cases that feels like we're begging for just a decent living wage is ridiculous. To sit here and listen to everybody talking about how other districts are already looking to increase their pay and we're just trying to get to where they are is not okay for the county that I live in and my two children. I am a Forge mom, I am a Hampton Oaks teacher, and I am a proud citizen of Stafford County. And it is not okay that we are in this condition with our schools, with our pay, with our teachers, with our buildings, with our curriculum, or anything. We need to take a good hard look at what we're doing to this community as a whole. Because I know 10 years ago when I came here, Stafford County, we were, I was a military wife, and he was stationed at Fort Belvoir. I could have picked Fairfax, I could have picked Prince William, I could have picked Manassas City, I picked Stafford, because Stafford looked, appeared, sounded like, and the resounding, um, I can't even think of a word right now, but the resounding thing that I kept hearing from all the friends who were already here with Stafford County was where it's at. Let's make Stafford County where it's at again. I want our teachers to be here and to stay here, and I want our students to come home to school every day to the same faces year after year. This is just the beginning. 5% is just the beginning, and we thank you from the bottom of our hearts for that. But let's make it more than 5%. Let's do more to keep our teachers here. Let's make this county the county that it once was. Thank you. Excuse me, can you please come back and sign in? Uh, excuse me, the speaker that was just here, we need you to, to sign in. That's part of the records that we keep. Thank you. Sorry. Hi, um, I'm Casey Clark. I live at 75 Beagle Road in Falmouth. I'm art teacher at Falmouth Elementary and an SEA member, and my children attend Falmouth as well. Um, my husband is also a teacher. He teaches career and technical education in a critical need area in ComTech and cybersecurity. But even though Stafford High Schools have had openings every year in this area, probably have open spaces now, he drives 25 miles to teach in Falkir County. And um, every year I try to persuade him to apply closer to home, but he refuses because in Falkir he has a higher salary, lower health insurance premiums, smaller classes, and tuition reimbursement, which is essential in technology education. While Falkir has some of the same budget issues as Stafford, over the past eight years he has been able to rely on a consistent pay scale. My husband is exactly the kind of teacher we want to recruit and retain in Stafford County. How many other highly qualified teachers are already living in our county and working elsewhere? 
My husband's expecting a significant raise this year as Falkir adjusts their pay scale, widening the gap between our salaries. Stafford needs to act fast and make a significant investment to retain and recruit quality teachers. It's not going to be a quick fix. It may take several years to regain the trust of our staff and candidates, but we have to make a commitment to start now. As a parent and taxpayer, I support a 5% salary increase for all school staff. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Susan Shelton. I live at 121 Nautical Cove in the harbor. Um, I had no plans to talk at all tonight. However, I had, um, I had something pop up on my time hop today, and it was that six years ago today, my boys um, began as students here in Stafford County. Um, my youngest was at Moncure, oldest uh, sixth grade at Shirley Heim. At the time, I wasn't working. Uh, we had just moved from Kentucky. I chose the next year to get a job in Prince William. I taught there for a year. Um, after trying to come back home, um, to get the kids to do their activities, doing what they need to do, I thought that it would be a good choice for me to come back home. Now, both of my kids are sophomores and a senior. In two years, my youngest, is going to be leaving the house. Both of the kids will be in college. That means more expenses for me. So when we talk about needing the 5%, I was in Prince William already. Don't make me regret my choice to come down to Stafford because in two years, I might not be able to afford to stay here. Thank you. 5%, no ifs, ands, or buts. Good evening, my name is Rebecca Musso. I live at 55 Iron Master Drive here in Stafford and I also had no intention of speaking this evening. And although I do support the 5% across the board for everybody and particularly the transportation as they are the ones who get our children to and from school safely, um, I really would like to address more of the the compensation in term, not just monetarily but in terms of the way that um, teachers are being respected and that is often reflected in our monetary compensation so personally I have a master's degree in education and I'm nationally board certified and I've gotten a little bit of bump from Stafford County from that but even within that 10 years ago when I started here in Stafford County my starting pay with a master's degree was 40000 and now I'm glad that my new friends who are coming in and the new teachers right out of college are able to start at a more livable wage. It's very insulting, not only to me with a higher education and experience, but my friends who have been teaching for 16, 20 years in the county to not have that same level of respect. And um, so I would appreciate your support in that regard. Um, I have taught so many wonderful students and one of the things that is most important to me besides the pay is our class sizes. I am now, I have six sections. I teach 192 sixth grade students, 192. When I started in Stafford County 10 years ago, my highest was 117. And that was when I had every day with them for about 55 minutes a day, all year. Now I have them every other day. And when you look at the minutes, the minutes don't really add up. I lost time, I still have the same amount of curriculum and I'm not able to give my students what they deserve. When I was at Stafford Middle School, I used to give labs and activities and in-depth STEM activities environments where the children were challenged and learned and could transfer those skills into real life. And now, I don't have that opportunity anymore. My classrooms are so big that I cannot provide the materials and space for my children to achieve what they need. And it's very discouraging and hard on my heart that I can't give them the kind of education that I know they deserve and that I have given in the past to 
many of our students in Stafford County who are flourishing and I would like you to consider increasing not just our pay but increasing pay to get teachers where we need to be so we don't have classes of 34 and 35. Thank you. Oh, uh, Ms. Russo, did you sign in? Hi, I'm Holly McKelvey. I'm a new resident to Stafford. I moved to 118 Green Bank in Hartwood in November. Prior to that, my child and I, and then my husband, who I married last December, lived in a hotel room. Because as a Stafford County employee, as a single mom, I could not afford to pay rent in Stafford County. Now, because I am married, my husband and I ha chose to move here. And we live in a house. And because of some uh, selling of a business, my husband is now unemployed and was laid off in January. So last week, I worried about where my food for my son was coming from. That's where I'm at. And then I hear parents talking, and you know what? My son, who has been in the Navy for one year, in another year will make more money than I do as a Stafford County employee. That, to me, is wrong. He is one year in the Navy, stationed in Japan, and he, makes, he will make more money than I do in a year. Because he was smart, and he went into the ROTC program, so when he got out of boot camp, he was an E3. He went to Japan in July. In, in September, he took his test. He got his E4 in December. At the beginning of February, he was recognized as an employee of the month for his department on his ship. And he will make more money in me than I do in a year. To me, that's a disservice. I also have my master's degree. I have my degree in special education as a, a reading specialist, and I also have my English certification, and I'm currently going for the TESOL certification. And it just seems to me that there, we need this 5% raise. We need it. Because we can't compete with other surrounding counties if we don't. Thank you. have many more. I think the kids say something else, but we won't go there. <laughs> All right. That brings us to um, board reports, 7.01, student discipline committee reports. Okay. Um, on February 7th, 2019, a committee of the school board met to consider three student disciplinary matters. The committee suspended student A for a total of 22 days out of school expelled student B and permitted the student to attend the regional program at the Phoenix Center for Innovative Learning, and three, lifted the expulsion for student C effective at the end of the 2018-2019 school year. Thank you, Dr. Chase. Uh, that brings us to board committee reports. Are there any committee reports? I think so. Dr. Chase? Yeah, I think uh, just briefly, uh, the Finance and Budget Committee met on February 19th. Um, and I, I think we've talked uh, at our previous work session about what was covered um, in terms of uh, proposed changes to the budget. Um, I did want to mention that at that board meeting, we got a presentation from Evergreen on uh, compensation for uh, our administrative assistants, um, basically everybody who's not covered as bus drivers, paras, teachers. Um, and there is in this current proposed budget uh, half a million dollars to try to move us in the direction of getting those other um, pay groups up to uh, market. So it will take a little while. It won't all happen this year, but um, we have started working on that. Thank you, Dr. Chase. Any other board committee reports? No? That brings us to superintendent's comments. I'll be turned on and I'll be brief. Okay. Um, just so you know, as uh, General Assembly is finishing up work. Uh, the governor has a lot of bills pertaining to education. There's just three 
classifications that I'll let you know, teacher licensure, there's some, some significant changes in that area, especially for teachers on provisional license, significant amount of bills pertaining to school safety. Um, one that I know you have some interest in, we're still waiting for the governor to sign it, um, a bill specific really to our planning region pertaining to the school calendar. Um, and uh, hopefully we'll hear something positive in a few days. Um, as you know, um, and Cherie is working on the memo, I think will go out tomorrow, maybe went out today. Our public hearings on the redistricting are scheduled for March 13th at North Stafford High School, March 14th at Stafford High School. Okay, so we, we have those days. Are you gonna ask what time? Oh. No, I'm, oh. I'm gonna, before you go on to the next subject, can I ask you really quickly just to explain in just a few words how this whole um, waiver thing worked and how how it is that we apply for it, what are the rules for it. Okay, because sure. there's, there's been a lot of speculation out there and yeah. I know you addressed it with one, one right. of the emails, okay. but I want everybody to hear it if you sure. would. So you, uh, 2017 and 18 is when you made a decision as a board to open up in 2019 and 20 before Labor Day. So waivers that were approved by the Department of Education were only for this year. 2018-19. We were not eligible to seek a waiver, although we qualify for a waiver, but the waiver window is in the month of July and August. And what's, it's called really a standards of quality compliance report. And I sign off that we, it's a trust system, which we meet, that we meet by the number of days we've been closed in a 10-year period. For five of those years, we exceeded what the state says you need to exceed to get a waiver. So we were not eligible to submit a waiver prior to that. Hence, the General Assembly decided to have a law between the time you approve your calendar and um, the time that uh, we would have gotten a waiver. So we've been very fortunate that our local uh, representatives, um, Yes, and, and, and who's the Stewart. senator? And Richard yeah, Stewart. our senator and, 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 and a delegate worked, and, he, and the House and Senate both approved. And it really is specific for our, our, our region. And that would allow us to open prior to Labor Day. There probably will be a requirement that there will be a slight adjustment to Friday before Labor Day. Um, we would have to adjust that calendar. So as soon as the governor signs, and we don't see any reason why he wouldn't sign it, it was overwhelmingly supported by the House and Senate, then um, we'll come back to the school board for a recommendation for, uh, to make that one day adjustment. So you're right, we were not eligible but, um, to apply, but we qualified, but we, the window is July and August of 19 for the 2021 school year. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, great. All right, uh, just two other quick things. Um, uh, let me just, uh, uh, two of us, uh, uh, well, four of us actually, uh, Pam Kale, myself, Dr. Chase, and Ms. Young are going to an equity conference that I think is going to be, uh, we're very fortunate, it's right here in Fredericksburg. So we're gonna take full advantage of that. I will say we had the Equity Opportunity and Diversity Committee last week, and we did spend a lot of time looking at data as it relates to discipline, and we had conversations about that and did a demographic breakdown and, and had I think um, important conversations, and as you know, we're, we're designing, we're in the process of a data dashboard, so that would be, for things to change, you have to see it, okay? You have to be willing to uh, address things that sometimes are uncomfortable to address. So we, we are started that process. And I know we're gonna get into the budget, but I do wanna, just in case it's not um, highlighted, I do wanna thank the board. Um, I think what you heard tonight, uh, was more than just salary increases, was what could we do to make um, uh, uh, the experience of being a teacher in Stafford a, a stronger experience? Because by that, by doing that, our kids will benefit greatly. And I know our teachers, besides having large class sizes, as you heard this evening, they're also addressing children um, that have you know, emotional and social needs. And your willingness to, um, increase school counselors that even exceed the standard of quality requirements says uh, a lot about your values. So I do want to thank you 
as a board, so that point's not missed. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, that brings us to the consent agenda. Do we have a motion for approval? Motion to approve. Second. Motion by Ms. Decatur, second by Dr. Chase. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. That brings us to action items 10.01, approval of the proposed new policy 3613 and regulation 3613R, locally awarded verified credit and special permission, LVC. Any questions about this or anyone? All right, do we have a motion? I, I move that we approve um, uh, the changes to uh, school board policy 1105. Second. Oh, my 30, 3613. 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, sorry, 3613. Oh, well, we may need it in 1105, but we'll save that for another second. night. Second. Right. <laughs> All right, so we have a motion for approval, and what's that, a second? Second. Second by Dr. Second by, second by Ms. Young. Yep. All right, uh, any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimously, 10.02. Approval of the use of the National Cooperative Sourcewell Graninger Facilities Maintenance Repair and Operating Supply Contract for the Procurement of Critical Buildings and Grounds Repair and Maintenance Parts Using Budgeted FY19 Funds. Do we have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Second. Motion by Mr. Cater. Well, you got to get in there a little faster. <laughs> but. You want to give that to Ms. Egan, it is her birthday. <coughs> All right, Sec motion by Ms. Decatur, second by Ms. Egan. <laughs> All right, any discussion? Yes, um, I, I just, I know this came up at the last meeting. I just want to understand exactly what we are approving. Because we are not approving the contract. Are we, I, 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 it says we're approving the contract, but it, it says that we, <laughs> it will expire in October. I just want to make sure we're approving the right. We're, we're approving. Well, I'll let them. I, I, I mean, because it said, okay. It says for the procurement, so that we're okay. able to I, use I just want to make sure contract. I know what I'm approving, if that makes sense. Yes, ma'am. It, it, um, we are approving the use of the contract. It's currently a contract out there in the cooperative. Um, it's a cooperative contract for uh, localities and school divisions to use. And so we're asking the board to allow us to use the contract um, uh, up to the amount that we're asking. Um, anything, you know, we, we project that we will exceed the superintendent's authority on the use of those funds, and so we're asking the school board to, um, to allow us to use that. And Madam, mm, oops, okay. sorry, go ahead. Mad Madam Chair, I just wanted to comment on my comments from the last time, and I want to ask it again, just to make sure that I have the same answer, which <laughs> was, um, and, uh, it's just in my mind, I want to just make sure that you said that the contract ends in, was it October 2019, correct? Uh, this particular contract, as I identified in the uh, agenda item, will expire October 21st, as you said. Yeah, um, and, and second, that you could use up to that amount, but it doesn't have to be the whole amount. That's correct, yes, okay. ma'am. Okay. Right, Ms. Hatter, did you have a follow-up question? No, it, uh, and it appears that this is not a budget impact. It's like that the 175000 is among various things, and this will now be dedicated mm -hmm. to this particular contract yeah. if needed. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Right. Thank you. All right. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. All right. We come to the highlight of the evening, 10.03, approval of the school board's FY20 funding request for presentation to the Stafford County Board of Supervisors. Do we have a uh, motion? Motion to approve 10.03 amended uh, approval of the school board's FY20 funding request for presentation for the Stafford County Board of Supervisors. All right. We have a motion by Ms. Young. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Dr. Chase. Discussion? Just to be clear, this includes the 5%, <laughs> correct? Yes. And the 1% for and 1% for 13, 13 and, above. and above. Okay, thank you. And the 500,000 for the uh, various categories, including but not limited to administrative assistance. And 5% and for everyone. Everyone, everyone yes, 5 across the board. 5% for everyone, including all the administrators. <laughs> and, and others and among that, but we won't go can on Can Ms. And Chase on. give a quick rundown? Dr. Chase? Dr. Chase, give a quick rundown. Apologies. Sure. So um, 
just these were adjustments that were made to um, Dr. Kisner's proposed budget. So uh, we asked to give the 5% across the board to everybody, including administrators. Uh, we asked for an additional 1% to the teacher scale enhancement for levels 13 to 39 because uh, we uh, want to be competitive, more competitive than we currently are. Um, there is, let me just see here, uh, we hope to get the nurses scale up to the, all the way up to the teacher scale. Um, I'm trying, and, and then counselors, uh, we, Dr. Kisner originally asked for what he thought was going to be the new SOQ, and the new SOQ is below that. So instead of 17 and a half counselors, it's eight, about eight counselors. Uh, Dr. Kisner asked for an additional three beyond that, so we'll be asking for approximately 12 additional counselors next year. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's about it as far as the changes that we made. Maybe just the health insurance one. Um, we're, we're going to be, oh, and the health insurance premiums are going to go down slightly next year, okay. are proposed to go down slightly next year. In one case, by one cent. <laughs> but it's still a decrease. Yeah, that's true. It's a decrease. Ms. Decatur. On account of there was no board member comments tonight, I'll just, um, I'll just say uh, you guys started this for the record. All right, Ms. Hazard. Um, again, I think this is a really important step tonight, um, and I will be supporting the budget, but I do have, I feel like I need to also say some of the things that I um, had concerns about and still have some concerns going forward. Um, I do believe that compensation is a big part of this budget, and it is, but I do truly believe that we also, the quality of life in our buildings is important as well. And I am very concerned about the um, elementary schools that are approaching 1,000 students and the additional staff that we are going to need to meet the needs of our kids. And I think that's something we have to address. Um, I also believe our quality of life in our buildings, we have to look at class sizes. We have to re-examine it at elementary. We have to look at it at middle. We have to look at it at high school. So I do. Please know, teachers, I support this 5%. I support the compensation, but I still have concerns that we need to be doing the other things as well in your classrooms for your quality of life. I believe we as a board have to look at that and come up with a plan. Um, I am concerned that I want us to have this 5%, but I do believe we are going to have to go and work hand in hand with our board of supervisors to come up with some kind of long-term plan for compensation within Stafford County. The 5% is great, but without a long-term plan to say to our board and to our community, just as much as our supervisors, this is what we want to do with teacher compensation in the next five years, or pick your thing. We have to do that because Without a plan, we will not be shooting for anything, and every year we will come across with a new idea. And not, please know, I like this idea, but long term, we have to have some kind of plan, and I believe our board has to work on that. I know Dr. Kisner brings a lot of experience, but I think we will also fare better across the street and with our community when we say this is what we want to do to make this the best place for education in Stafford, in, excuse me, in Virginia, but we have to have a plan and we have to have everybody sign off on it. So I like this start, but I feel that I could not, without saying that I have those concerns that that's what the work, our board and all boards and working with the SEA and with our community partners to make that happen. I watched Chesterfield County do it three or four years ago very successfully with their business community who asked for a tax increase because they saw the um, benefit of a great education system and I think that's something we all need to um, consider going forward but I will be supporting the budget tonight. I do think those are some areas we have to address. Okay, any other comments? Hearing none. I don't want to be precise on the class size that you get. In the budget, we, there are, I forget the number right now, I know 14 at the middle school, there's 20 plus two teaching positions. Um, 
that are not special ed related in their budget to help address that size of funding for the public to be aware of. Thank you. Um, no other uh, comments or questions? We'll um, call for the vote. All in favor of approval of the uh, school board's FY20 funding request <clears throat> for presentation at Stafford County Board of Supervisors, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. All right, we have five information items. These will all be coming back to the board for action at the next meeting. I'd suggest if anyone has any questions or uh, wants information about any of these that they send the, uh, you know, the questions to Dr. Kisner and he will have them uh, answered and shared with all the board members. Uh, first item is 1101, adoption of a resolution to nominate three local businesses for the 2019 BSBA business honor roll. Okay, any discussion on this? No, this will be coming back to us for action at the next meeting. Um, 11.02, approval of a six month premium holiday for employee paid health insurance from April 1st through September 1st, 2019. Any questions about this? No? Um, 11.02, oh, go ahead, Dr. Chase. Yeah. So um, I just wanted to, to make sure that um, as we develop a plan, I, first I want to make sure we really can put this in action by April 1st if we vote on it next time. Um, and then the second thing I just want to make sure of is that we do a, a good job communicating with staff that, that their paycheck is going to go up for six months and then it's going to go back down when they start paying their premium again. And so I just want to make sure that um, we do a good job of communicating that to staff. Okay. And, here's and, Mr. This, and here comes Mr. Fulmer. <laughs> so just to clarify, we will, if we wait till next week, that's, that's not an issue. Bring it back for action. We'll have time to make the changes in the system and, and adjust it for the April 1st paycheck. And uh, we've already started, you know, the discussion about how we communicate. This is one of the first items that as we started discussing this as a department, how we were going to um, effectively communicate that. And I made sure to point it out in the board agenda item. One of the last items is that we're going to take it very seriously of communicating that. And um, there's a lot of changes actually with uh, teachers paychecks in the summer because of the way we handle our VRS deductions. They don't have VRS deductions in the summer. So now they will also not have a deduction for the health insurance if they have it. So come September 1, they're going to see a big change from July 1 to September 1. So we'll want to make sure we effectively communicate that. And then as we get closer to July 1, we will follow up and make sure as like a reminder communication, hey, mm -hmm. or sorry, September 1, a reminder communication that your pay will be adjusted right. again. Um, I, um, I, I just also wanted to, to know if uh, staff would have an option if they wish to uh, move this money into retirement funds or to move it into um, an, a health savings account if they want to avoid uh, tax consequences or something like that. Um, good question. I believe I believe they can make those changes. Yes. It'd be good uh, if, if staff knew exactly how to answer that. Yeah, should, I, should I, I will get you. A, I'll get that. you a confirmation. Right. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Just a comment, Chris. Um, do we have a number of individuals that we know would receive their checks manually so you will have something in their envelope with that information? Um, so, so we have no employees that receive a manual check now. Everybody is direct deposit. Okay. But um, we can, we would ultimately um, rely on email communication, but not all employees have email. So we would work with supervisors to make sure it's posted and communicated directly with individuals. Okay. And then, of course, if you have individuals that don't speak English, you need to be able to get that translated, right? Okay. We'll get that. Yep. Yes, ma'am. Let me know if you need any help. <laughs> Thank you. I just want to say, Madam Chair, that uh, now between Chris, uh, you know, this health premium holiday is, you know, it's just for the folks that are new in the system, and it's free health care for six months, and it's a big deal. That's a lot of money. <clears throat> so, um, I'd like to thank uh, not only you, Chris, and the, and the team, but uh, Dr. Chase definitely for, you know, we talk about this every year, but she actually, I think, um, you know, went the extra mile this year and really fought hard for it. And, um, and I know I really appreciate it. And I'm, I know the staff and the, <clears throat> the county staff is really going to appreciate this. So. 
Thank you. All right, 11.03 uh, was removed. It will come back uh, at another time for us. 11.04. Uh, approval of change order number one to VMDO Architects for additional design services for $47,500 for the renovations addition Federal Berry Farms Elementary School project. Any Thank questions you. about this? Uh, would you like to say something? I, I, well, okay, I'll say something. <laughs> so uh, the Board of Supervisors approved the um, Ferry Farm renovation and the, and the fixing of the basement, which is, was very much appreciative, and I thank them very much. And I thank the board support for, for moving this forward, as well as Dr. Kisner and his staff. Um, we do have tonight here just uh, Rob Winstead. I don't know if we have any questions on this. It's forty-seven thousand dollars. It's um, it's it's due to the um, re rewickering the the plans. Architects are very expensive. If I had half of Rob's money, I'd burn mine. <laughs> but uh, he wears fancier shoes than I do. Um, but you know they did rewicker the plans for the. Um, for the, the, the smaller size scale to fit within the budget, so I really appreciate that. Okay, all right, that'll come back to us at the next meeting for action, 11.05. Uh, this is a new item, approval of change order number two to VMDO Architects for additional design services for $167,500 to add the 1966 wing basement renovation to the renovations addition Berry Farm elementary school project I have a comment on, on actually both of these for Ferry Farm <clears throat> so I know they're coming back for and I, Miss Egan is not here um, but I know they're coming back um, again the timeline that we have set right now is there a way or a reason why we need to bring it back if we're trying to like get this working and get it the school opened before you know the fact that we have August coming up I mean, should we just well, try to move that, this? You know, a that's a good point, Madam Chair, and I was going to float it by the board. This is something that is not a, for public digestion for two weeks. I mean, this is this is this is work. This is money that we owe the architect for doing their work, and then this is also a scheduled fee for doing the basement design. It it's not going to change in two weeks. Not so to mention the public's been begging for it for well over. So should we, well vote? Over. Should we <laughs> well, vote on I, this I, tonight? Or? I'd like to ask whether this is going to move the yeah. project along further or the, whether there would not be any well, delay. Yes. That's, that's the question for me. Yes. If it's going to speed the project up, yeah, you know, I, totally I think agree. that makes a difference. Totally agree. But that's not part of the information in front of us. That's right. Quick answer to your question is yes. If, uh, if, the, if the additional services requests were approved tonight, Tomorrow morning, I'd be on the phone, sending the team forward on the design of the basement. Uh, but until it's approved, I really can't activate uh, the rest of the consultants and, and make sure that they're doing the work. So it would speed up the process and keep us on schedule uh, based on the revised construction schedule that was part of the decision uh, behind the Board of Supervisors adding these funds. It's, it's the right thing to do for the school. It, this would just help us move forward quickly. Okay, what about the money that we owe you um, can you wait two weeks for that? No, he needs gas in his car right now. <laughs> well, uh, that's not going to speed. You're not going to hold anything up, are you? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. That would not hold us up. It would not keep us from doing the the basement work. Obviously, we would appreciate it. It would it would solve some accounting and billing problems for me, and a, a, a large, a significant amount of that forty-seven thousand five hundred dollars is for our consultants, who have already invoiced uh, for this, for these services. Uh, let's vote on it. Let's vote. I, I do have a question if we are going forward with this tonight. Um, do we have, as I, I did not listen to all of the Board of Supervisors, we have enough of our own meetings. My understanding was that the $1.9 million was added to the budget. I do not want to get us into an appropriation problem which happened with our AG Wright project that went over there because now certain things are not included in that project. I'm sure Ms. Healy is aware. Of what, oh, was I'm pulled out, <laughs> of what was pulled out at the Board of Supervisors because of I the appropriation and the scope. Of the country last week, so <laughs> And I the scope of that. the work. I don't want us to get in a um, appropriation issue. Clearly, they, um, I, I thought I heard, certainly, that the Board of Supervisors is doing the $1.9 million, but I don't know if we got the appropriation, and I do not want us to be on the hook for it. If we can use it from another fund, that's fine. But that does make me a little nervous without an appropriation. Okay, well, this item is, is for the design, yeah. and that's the 167500 which we're going to have to do in any event. 
I understand. It does say it's from this budget, though, and that makes me nervous because we will not be pulling it from appropriated funds, which has only been about eight hundred and sixty-five thousand yeah. dollars. I could just. I'm just concerned. Yeah, I could just let you know because I presented the okay. request. The board of supervisors made it very clear for approval. We staff both on the school side and county side stated we did not need the bulk of the money now. We need the design money. So, based on your action tonight, then we would go ahead and formalize the process to receive the money for the design. Um, you're right, we do not have the actual construction dollars, but we're not at that point. Um, pending any further comments, uh, Madam Chair, if I could, I, uh, I'd like to make a motion to move um, 1105, the design, uh, up for action. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, motion um, by Mr. <laughs> his name it's not, doc, it's not Dr. McGosker, but still, it's, it's Mr. With a, with a large M because I'm a little overweight. But. Mr. Red. So. Mr. McGosker, second by Ms. Young. Um, any discussion? No, Again. I'm glad the architect was here to explain that we can get moving faster if we do this this evening. Again, I, I just have to reiterate my concern that there is not an appropriation from across the street, and this says it was coming from the project budget. Sure. I just don't want to, us to be... So I feel that I'm going to vote against unless we can put an appropriate, some kind of language saying that we are assured that we have the appropriation, which I don't know if we have. I just, I, I saw what they did on the H right one that I am just, un I'm concerned. I want us to be very transparent. I believe this is something the Board of Supervisors will approve as an appropriation. I just want to know if we need to approve it tonight, send the appropriation over. I don't know. Okay, so that was all, Okay, all, the all right, calls. any other calls. discussion? All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 All opposed? No. Dr. Chase? Aye. Ms. Decatur? Aye. Ms. Egan is absent. Ms. Hazard? No. Ms. Healy? Yes. Mr. McCoskey? Yes. Ms. Young? Yes. Madam Chair, motion passes five to one. All right, so that moves it to action. Madam Chair, I'd like to move, uh, oh. move for approval of 1105. All right, we have a motion by Second. Mr. McCosker. <laughs> Redo. Second. Second. Ms. Young. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? No. Dr. Chase? Aye. Ms. Decatur? Aye. Ms. Egan is absent. Ms. Hazard? No. <clears throat> Ms. Healy? Yes. Mr. McCoskey? Yes. Ms. Young? Yes. Madam Chair, motion passes 5 to 1. Okay, the last information item is 1106, approval to add the school division to the remainder of the county government's 10-year maintenance and system upgrade agreement to with Motorola Solutions and approval of a contract amendment and the amount of $283,610.96 for maintenance of the transportation services radio system. Any questions about this item? No, um, I, I do have a question. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So I just wanted to, so this is a 10-year thing, and so are we approving 280000 for this all to be go at once? I mean, it looks like it gets paid every year for 10 years. Like, it, it looks does. like it's 28000 29, Yes, ma'am. The original contract was a 10-year contract. There's eight years and one month left as of this coming August. Mm -hmm. And so um, we are proposing to the board that we enter into that contract starting at that eight-year, one-month period, and that we would pay annual installments of uh, they're identified in the agenda item. Um, and so collectively, it exceeds um, the superintendent's authority. And because it, we're entering into a contract for that entire period, and not just one period, with, um, so we felt it prudent or we were required to bring it to the board for your consideration. Okay, so, but we're not approving 283000 to be spent this year. We're, That's we're, correct. It's going to be two, eight. right, it's, it's a little bit each year or, or, or about 8%, eight, about an eighth each year. Yes, ma'am. Okay, got it. I just want to make sure. Yes, ma'am. So this year's only $2,373.25. For August. <laughs> yep. like and then, yeah. yeah. Just like I have a question. Say it exceeds <laughs> Really, yeah. Really. Yeah, uh, 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 my question is, um, before you started the 10-year, the new 10-year maintenance plan, did you, like, look around to see if there was any competition that had 
um, more updated technology and could do the job better, or was it because we already have those in, do you have them in the buses also, or just? No, ma'am, um, this particular radio system, and I, it might have been prior to your arrival on the board, but uh, the county entered into this um, radio system. They, they entered into the agreement with Motorola, and we were operating on older radios. Um, and so those older radios were starting to, um, the life and our su supportability of that, pro of that system was going to end here in several years with FCC uh, access. And so the county offered us to go onto their system, and it made perfectly sense. Okay, so this is shared sense. service. It is, absolutely. Okay, okay, I'm good. Absolutely, yes, yeah. ma'am. All right, any other questions, we'll send them to the superintendent. And this will be back for action on the next meeting. The next school board meeting is March 12th at 7 p.m., but there is a work session on Thursday, 6 o'clock, and that's at the Professional Development Center, right? Or where is that, Missy? That is Did we set it? It is the Okay, all right, 6 o'clock, work session. We'll probably see a lot of you there. <laughs> we are now done. Thank you.